we're going to take a second and explore an amazing online resource it's been on the web for a little while it's called CSS Zen Garden it's a great place for us beginning in CSS to kind of go and explore but it's also still a very challenging place for even those of us who have a large background in CSS um, again one thing I do want to remind everyone that this is not a CSS class uh, there's going to be more classes within the certificate that go into CSS more in depthly but here in, in this class, I at least want to give you a broad overview of essentially these things, like the power of CSS and using it to control uh, a site's layout and visual design. That's separating the content from the design. It's a very big aspect that I hope you walk away from this class understanding. And then in this video, I'm also going to show you just some of the differences between inline CSS. That's, that's some of that's adding CSS styles right there in line within the directly attached to the element itself and then embedding the CSS at the top of the page that's where the, you could have a set of CSS rules at the top of the page that control the visual design of the entire page and then even the more powerful external CSS which can be which we're going to be getting to a little bit further on in the course but that's going to allow us to control the visual design and the layout of our entire site wide from one HTML from one CSS document so Let's get in and go ahead and take a look at CSS Zen Garden. So here it is. This is CSS Zen Garden. The link is within the lecture page, which is basically cssengarden.com. Uh, when you get here, I would just suggest you know reading everything here on this page. This is great information. This is great content. And don't forget the content is separate from the visual design, like these images, this pop out, this bar here, and we'll look at that here in just a second. But Remember, this is the content, this is all visual design, this is all controlled by CSS. So, a demonstration, this website basically is a demonstration of what can be accomplished visually through CSS-based design. Select any style sheet from the list over here on the right, which we'll do in just a second, and it'll load it on the page. So what I want to do is I want to download the sample, so I'm going to go over here to HTML file, I'm going to right click, I'm going to click Save Link As. Then I'm, I have a new folder on my desktop just called new folder. I'm going to go within there and I'm going to save it. It automatically saves it as Zen Garden Sample. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. So now I have this sample HTML file saved in that folder. And then I'm also going to come over here and save the CSS file, which is an external CSS file. And I'm going to click Save Link As. I'm going to save it within that same folder. And it's just called Zen Garden Sample and I'm going to hit save. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize my window and I'm going to go into my new folder. And now I have two files. I have my external CSS and I have my HTML. Let's take a look at and look see how this looks in the browser. So I'm going to open with, I'm going to choose Firefox. And this is how it looks in the browser. This Again, this is just the raw content. This is the raw content of the site. I could open up this in Notepad++. And here's all the code that's controlling that page. You'll notice that the code is heavily commented to help you go through and learn what exactly is going on here. It even tells us this XHTML document is marked up to provide the designer, that's you, with you and everyone in the class, with maximum possible flexibility. There are some classes and extraneous tags that are needed, and in the real world situation, it's more likely that it would be much more leaner. However, I think I, that's the people that create CSS and code. I think we can all agree that even given that, we're still better off than as if we had built in tables. So this is th this site started up right around the time when we started visually designing our pages with CSS rather than the tables. Uh, so that's why they have that funny plug there. So again, this is just the raw content. We can also open up our our CSS within Notepad++, and then it gives us some more comment information here. Now, so what we want to do is, if how do we get this this page here, which we just saw in the browser, how do we get it to then be controlled by that CSS? Well, what we need to do is we need to link in, so then it would look like this, but what we need to do is we need to link in that external CSS. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we can do is we need to determine where we want to link it in at. And what we would what we would probably do is we could just link it here underneath the style. So we're going to go ahead and open up link. 
Now your book talks about how to specifically do this. Um, and then there's other resources. And we're also going to be practicing with this following on with one of the resources. But now let's go ahead and I'm just going to go ahead and show you how to do it here just to facilitate the discussion I'm trying to have with you. We tell it where the file is. The zengarden-sample.css. Give it a type. Text CSS. Save it. So now we've linked in zengarden-sample.css and it's a style sheet and that specific type. So now we can refresh our page and now our site is redesigned. Well, not, well it's not really. Our site is now visually designed with CSS, but you'll notice that the images are gone. But anyway, so they gave us this basic HTML file. They also gave us the CSS file. So we, are, we could go into our CSS file and we could explore it and make changes and learn how the CSS is written. That's something that you would do further on in the program in other CSS classes, uh, in other CSS classes that you would have within our program. But I just wanted you to see the differences between visually separating the content from the design, which we've done here, and we've downloaded those and, and actually explored them. Now let's take a look at, now let's just go back to this, the original site, and now let's do the fun part. So I got the boring stuff out of the way, now let's do the fun part. So now let's say, for example, let's say our website, this was our website, this is our raw content, and your client comes to you and says, oh, you know, I'd really like some colors to change, I'd like this to change over here, I'd like this to change, I was thinking of putting all of this over here maybe um, on the right. So basically, the client's coming to you with all of these changes that they would like to make. Well, if you had all of your sites written with maybe an embedded, all of the pages within the site may be written within an embedded uh, CSS or even lots and lots of inline CSS or at minimum your site wasn't, your content of the website wasn't separated from the design what would happen then is just the, the redesign of the site would then take quite a bit longer because you have to go in and clean out all the old stuff and eventually get it down to the bare bones and then start applying that uh, the new visual to the site so it's better to go ahead and start off with the raw content first and then add your visual styles later which is the way that I have this class going from uh, learning about CSS, you know, we barely started it with in week three, week four, we you might start getting some raw content, and then week five, I, I start trying to get us into integrating it, it all together. But so let's say we want to make those changes. So then all you would have to do is if if your whole site was controlled with CSS and this it was written up this way where the content is separate from the design, you could then just make some changes to the CSS itself, and then it would control the the visual design site wide. And that's what we would have here. So now what we can do is do the fun part, which is select a design. So we can come over here to, for example, and click under the C. Just by clicking under the C, we have now our entire website that we just had previously, all of that raw content. This raw content is now visually designed within another style sheet. You may be thinking, wow, this doesn't make any sense. Is that really the same thing? Yes, it's the raw content. Remember, a demonstration of what can be accomplished visually through CSS-based design is now being controlled with a completely different style sheet. That's because this raw content, this design was the, the visual design was separate from the raw content, and then now we just change style sheet, and we now get this visual design of the page. Same site, same content, just different visual design, different layout. Here's another different way to do it. It's still the exact same site. A demonstration of what can be accomplished visually through CSS-based design. It's the exact same site, just visually redesigned differently. Same site, different visual design. Same site, different visual layout and different design. So if a client comes to you and they want their site updated with maybe new colors or uh, new images and different things like that, if you if your whole if you have your whole site visually controlled uh, with CSS, that transition would be simple. That's because you're you've separated the raw content from the design. So 
Where do you go from here? Remember, this is an entry-level class. I know some of you have further experience with CSS, so you might get a little bit more out of this resource than others. But for those of you that are new to CSS and new to HTML and web design in general, which is a large part of the class because this is a foundational 2000 level class, I would suggest just reading all of this, kind of getting a firm handle of what the power, for, power of CSS is, exploring the different sites, trying to take a look at their CSS rules maybe and seeing what, how some of the things are different. But basically just use this site to kind of give you just an awareness of the power of CSS or essentially as they call it, the beauty of CSS to base design as opposed to signing things in tables, which was the way that things were about uh, five, ten years ago. So enjoy this resource and let the class or I know if you have any questions.